Hello, I'm Tyler Schaefer, and today I will be talking to you about my research, the electrochemical detection of trace metals in commercially available dog foods via voltammetric methods. Let's start off with the research goals. The goals of this research project are twofold. Firstly, to prove that voltammetric methods, um, differential pulse stripping voltammetry in particular, are viable methods for the detection of metals, particularly arsenic, cadmium, copper, iron, and lead in commercially available dog foods. The accuracy and detection limits of DPSV compare quite favorably to those of ICPMS. However, DPSV has the advantage of greater simplicity and much lower instrument cost. Secondly, use the method of standard addition to determine the concentration of these trace substances in three different dog foods. Moving on to some background information. The vast majority of people care a lot about their pets. Most see them as a extension of their own family. And a large portion of how you interact with your pets is in what you feed them. Therefore, it is paramount that one feeds their pets food that not only provides for their nutritional needs, but does not in any way harm them. In this project, three commercially available dog foods will be analyzed for arsenic, cadmium, copper, iron, and lead using DPSV. Uh, this particular research project um, is a variation of an FDA study that was conducted in 2019 to determine trace concentrations in not only pet food, but also livestock feed. Um, the prior study was uh, conducted using ICPMS or inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. Um, the gold standard, so to speak, for analysis with a detection limit in the parts per billion range. However, these instruments are generally very expensive, especially when compared to a system such as the Wave Now electrochemical platform used in this project, uh, capable of performing a variety of voltammetric analyses, including DPSV, the latter of which also has a detection limit in the parts per billion range. Uh, this serves as a cheaper way for a company producing pet food to monitor levels of these trace elements and ensure compliance with FDA standards. Um, the FDA standards can be found below in table one. So for arsenic, we have an FDA accepted value or a um, maximum tolerable level of 30 parts per million. For cadmium, that would be 10 parts per million. And for lead, that would also be 10 parts per million. Now let's talk a little bit about how DPSV works. So if you go down here to figure one, you can see um, a sample image of an electrode. You can see these, you can see ions in solution in this first image. Um, and then you can see these ions being um, plated to the electrode. Uh, following that, you can see um, each of these ions or each of these metals being um, oxidized back off the electrode one by one. So you can see this, the row of black dots moving and then the row of red dots and then the row of gray dots as um, potential is increased. Uh, following that in figure two, you'll see a uh, DPSV potential versus time graph with a sample voltammogram. Um, you can see uh, the accumulation step, which is the same as that second image in figure one, uh, where all the ions in solution are reduced onto the electrode. And then you can see as potential increases different uh, metals with different um, standard reduction potentials will be oxidized off of the electrode. And this will result in peaks in a voltammogram, which you can see as the lower part of figure two. Uh, moving on to the experimental section. Uh, the experimental section for this research uh, is summed up by this flow chart. Three different samples of commercial dog food were collected and these samples were then prepared for acid digestion. Approximately five grams of each sample uh, was digested. Uh, so you can see for sample one, two, and three, the amounts digested. 
uh, samples were then digested in 50 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid for approximately one and a half hours at 85 degrees Celsius, and then left overnight uh, to further digest before being vacuum filtered. Um, as far as vacuum filtration in figures four and five, you can see the results of that. Figure four shows the filtried, the um, waste left on the filter paper after vacuum filtration. And in figure five, you can see the filtrate, the, um, the stuff that came over from the filtration. Um, solutions were then prepared for this research, including uh, a one PPM lead standard, a one PPM cadmium standard, a one PPM arsenic standard, a one PPM copper standard, and a one PPM iron standard. Uh, other solutions made include four millimolar mercury acetate, for electroplating to the electrodes, and a three molar nitric acid used for cleaning all of the uh, sample vials and things like that. Um, as far as instrumentation, the instrumentation used in this research was the Pine Research Wave Now platform, uh, particularly differential pulse stripping voltammetry. And as far as testing goes, uh, first each electrode was um, mercury micro droplet, droplet plated. Uh, and that was done using 15 milliliters of four millimolar mercury acetate, a carbon screen printed electrode, um, all being purged under nitrogen. And this was done by bulk electrolysis at negative one volts uh, for 17 minutes in order to deposit uh, micro droplets of mercury onto the surface of these electrodes. In figure three, you can see the apparatus itself. And in figure six, you can see the um, screen printed electrodes. On the left, you can see uh, a standard screen printed electrode before anything has been done to it. Um, that black uh, square in the center is the working electrode. The horseshoe shaped bar is the counter electrode and the little silver dot on the right-hand side would be the reference electrode. Um, and you can see on the left, it is unadulterated. It has had nothing done to it. And on the right, you can see what has happened after it has been mercury microdroplet plated. As far as results for this, um, I've chosen to show these four voltammograms for this poster. Um, in figure seven, you can see a voltammogram for pure dilute nitric acid. Um, this acid has been diluted in order to not to dissolve the mercury off of the electrode, but otherwise it remains unadulterated. There has been nothing added to it. In figure eight, you can see a voltammogram of sample one in blue. And then you can see a voltammogram of sample one spiked with approximately two parts per billion, 30 microliters of one PPM lead standard. You can see here that the um, peak at, uh, at about zero or negative 0 0.7 is much higher on the, is a little bit higher on the graph. Uh, and that indicates that there was a larger uh, reading of current which is how you measure for concentration. Uh, this shows that there is a difference here, and that comes into play when using the uh, method of standard addition uh, and linear regression later. Um, you can see another peak in figure nine at about the same place. Uh, this is for sample two, and you can again see that it is being spiked with um, two parts per billion and then uh, another four parts per billion for a total of six parts per billion of um, lead standard. And you can see this peak growing, showing uh, an increase in lead concentration. Um, and in figure 10, you can see uh, sample two again, but this time spiked with copper. Uh, two parts per billion at first, and then 10 parts per billion. Uh, worth of copper standard. And you can see this peak growing and shifting slightly, but uh, rest assured it is still uh, copper. So for the results of this research, 
uh, pure dilute nitric acid was found to exhibit a peak at about uh, negative 0.3 volts. This peak tends to match quite well with um, the peak shown by copper and is likely due to some sort of impurity in the nitric acid as it was seen in all samples. Um, the concentration was found in pure nitric acid to be about 0 0.0075 uh, ppm. So this must be subtracted from the copper concentrations found in other samples. Uh, no samples tested were found by this method to contain any cadmium or arsenic. However, experimental results showed that lead, copper, and iron were likely components of the samples analyzed. So this is the direction the research went in after that. Um, sample one was found to contain trace amounts of copper as well as lead. Um, a peak for lead was found at approximately negative 0.7 volts. The concentration in, of lead in sample one was found to be approximately one ppm. Uh, a copper peak was found at approximately 0.3 volts. Uh, the concentration of copper in sample one was found to be about 0.5 ppm once corrected for any impurities um, within the nitric acid used for digestion. Sample two was found to contain peaks of copper and lead as well. Uh, lead at approximately 0.7 volts uh, with a concentration of about 3.5 ppm and copper at approximately negative 0.3 volts. The concentration uh, of copper within sample two was found to be about 0.4 ppm once corrected for any impurities within the nitric acid. Um, a usable voltammogram and quantitative results were not able to be determined for the third sample. Um, to conclude, this project seems to have uh, proven the initial goal of the experiment, which was to determine the ability of voltammetric methods uh, to determine trace concentrations of metals in dog food. The goal was to prove that these methods would be a highly effective uh, uh, method comparable with um, other methods such as ICPMS, but with a uh, significantly lower barrier to entry regarding price. Um, the specific methodology was found to be effective for the above mentioned elements, finding trace amounts of copper and lead in both samples. Findings for sample one concluded that the sample contained about one ppm again um, of lead and uh, about 0 0.5 ppm of copper. Sample two was found to contain approximately 3.5 ppm of lead and 0 0.4 ppm of copper. Uh, future uh, research work uh, would include uh, further refinement of these testing methods as they are not yet um, fully refined and uh, as well as the analysis of other feeds um, including cat food, livestock feeds, and other brands of dog foods. Finally, I would like to thank the following for their contributions. Dr. Greg Gould for the donation of samples, Dr. Kimberly Wozniak for the donation of samples, and the Center for Undergraduate Research at CalU for support with materials. Thank you.